The Monerotopia Weekly News segment is sponsored by WizardSwap.io, a non-custodial cryptocurrency exchange. All okay. right, Tony. Let's okay. So let me share my screen. Okay, so let's actually start off with what does. Wait, where's your screen here? Okay. Can you guys see it? Go ahead. Yes. Okay. So this is really, really sad news. Um, so local Monero posted on Twitter that after almost seven years, they've been in operation from the beginning of Monero pretty much. Um, but starting today, or actually on May 7th, they're winding down the process of shutting down. Um, and it's going to finish in six months. Oh my God. No oh, shit. I need to get back. <laughs> Windows. So, I know. So actually, because I'm dual booting on Linux and I barely use Windows anymore and just for the news, but I'm going to figure out how to uh, get the audio on Linux and I'm just going to literally get rid of Windows. I, <laughs> I, I hate Windows. I'm, I'm probably going to do it today. Just get rid of Windows and just do it on Linux because it's just driving me <laughs> insane. And Windows 11 sucks, by the way. It's awful. Um, <laughs> okay. Oh. So back to local Monero. <laughs> Um, yeah, so this is very yeah. sad. Um, let's go on what they posted. Um, yeah, so they're still going to like if you if you have any you know questions, uh, their support team is going to be available until the closure on the on um, November seventh. Uh, so we're still going to have support until then. But it's really really sad news. And um, let me see, they they wrote something. Um, where was it? So uh, yeah, I mean, the can, last trade before yeah, you, is, before trading is totally shut down. Um, all trades have to be finalized or canceled prior to uh, November seventh. And let me see where they wrote. Oh yes, here. Okay, so um, local Monero has been around for most of Monero's life. Fortunately, the Monero ecosystem has matured a lot over these years. So they are shutting down, but we're gonna have Avino, we're gonna have DEXs like Sarai, Atomic Swaps, the coming addition of full blockchain non anonymity set replacing rings of 16, as well as the continu continuing and rapidly accelerating development of the Monero protocol. We're confident that Monero's future is bright with or without our <laughs> platform, um, which is true, but it's still really sad to see them go. Yeah, we, we don't really know what happened. I mean, we could, uh, we could assume the worst, which is that they were essentially forced to shut down. Um, given, you know, the kind of the, the redefining of money laundering and the redefining of the, the need of a, a um, need to have a money service license. Um, so they maybe they felt that they were threatened. I mean, the fact is the way local Monero functions is they, you know, they did they did hold they did hold the Monero during trades um, and then would pass it off to to the buyer. Uh, so they were kind of always a target in that respect. Right, body? Am I am I getting that right? I mean they, they didn't use they didn't use multisig. Um, I know they used the bond that bond system, but effectively uh, Monero was held and then passed on. Um, you know, I, I guess I don't really know. I, I always thought it was multi-sig. I thought like they were an arbitrator on the, on the two of three multi-sig, but maybe you're right. Maybe it's just a bond that gets posted and, um, yeah, yeah, it was explained to me and I, I should have a better handle on it, but I kind of forgot. And, uh, hopefully we'll get Alex, we'll get Alex on here to, to talk about things at some point. Um, but I do think that kind of made them a bit of a target in the, in that respect, Granted, it was just putting together buyers and, and sellers, mm -hmm. um, but given given what we've seen with how the government has kind of moved the goalpost on what they consider a money transmitter, uh, local it does seem like was was in the in the bullseye. It does seem like the government has sort of pivoted here to saying that um, that anyone that's that's posting the order book like. Because that's one of the like that's a key function that you need to do trades. You need some kind of coordinator that that um, either whether whether it's trades or mixing or whatever. Like 
even if all of the crypto magic is happening in a peer-to-peer -peer fashion, um, there still has remained these centralized entities that sort of put together the order book and coordinate um, the that those transfers. And the government seems to have pivoted now to saying that, well, even that, and I don't think they've said that exactly outright, but just in a more broader context, it's it's that there's a central focal point of information now. Even that, um, and just the passing of a few messages is enough for them to accuse you of conspiracy to launder money. Based on what um, you guys said and what I think, I think it's more of a combination of external factors rather than internal. <laughs> so the external causing the internal of the shutting down. Uh, and then we'll get into an article about the IRS going against, um, directly against people that are against the government. Uh, it's going to be more and more dangerous, I feel, to talk about privacy and Monero. Uh, we'll get into it in, in a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it's it's having a chilling effect, right? So whether or not local Monero was asked, requested to take down their, their site, or that they just did it on their own because they felt threatened, we don't know. We may never know. Um, but we can assume that there is a chilling effect out there, right? So like I even have XMR Bazaar, which we're, we're ready to launch. Let me just bring that up real quick. Mm -hmm. Or do you want to send me the link and then I'll open it? Or do you want to share uh, your screen? Yeah, I just shared my screen, but oh, there we go. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so we're, we're ready to launch this. It's pretty much good to go. And in a lot of ways is actually very similar to local Monero, but it's for, for primarily for goods and services, but that looks so good. Well, wow. <laughs> but, pe but people may want to use it for trading Monero to gold backs or Monero to dollars. Right. Um, so we, we gotta, we gotta figure that out. I mean, where we do differ is Monero, uh, uh, XMR Bazaar does use multi-sig and has a mediator between a transaction, um, that you know, uh, is one of the, one of the signers of the transaction. Uh, so, um, it is different in that respect. We have, we have mediators who, uh, ass assist in, in the transaction by being a, a signer in a multi-six transaction. So they, they never hold any Monero during the trade. Uh, XMR Bazaar never holds any Monero during the trade. It's a true, true multi-six two or three multi-sig. So it is, it is different in that respect, but I guess the point I'm trying to make is, um, I, I need to figure out how we best position this so that it, it will, it, it, it won't be, um, you know, I don't know, uh, violating any, any money transmission rules. Right. Um, so the chilling effect is real. Um, I don't want it, you know, the idea wasn't to, to launch this thing anonymously. It's not trying to be a dark market. It's just trying to be a, the question, are, are, are we legally allowed to have peer to peer marketplaces where people use Monero to exchange? And I see, I see nothing in the law that, that prevents us from doing that. Um, I guess we just have to be careful with the way we structure it. Buddy, any, any thoughts on that? Do you guys remember when? Um, it wasn't that long ago, just a few months, the SEC was being sued for being arbitrary and capricious in their enforcement of the regulations. That's what we have here. That's what's happening across all departments of the government here, especially the Department of, uh, the Department of Injustice. Um, they, they want you to think that it's difficult to know what the law actually says or is because they're going to enforce it in an arbitrary and capricious fashion which has the effect of meaning that we're in a lawless society. There is no law. There is no, um, there's no, there's nothing clear. There's no regulation because everything is so vastly complicated that you have no idea what they're going to say one day to the next in Canada. Now they're even, they're making hate speech retroactive so that like anything you said 20 years ago, now they could arrest you for. So oh that's God. the point. The idea is to make people afraid and not open these platforms. The idea is to make it so vast that it doesn't matter whether you've obeyed the law, the spirit of the law, the regulations, the intent of the regulations. None of that matters. They they just they just wanted to um, they want to stop people that want to do freedom things like I, that. That would be my my take on that. Well, I'm, I, I think I'm taking a unique approach here in that I'm, bu I'm building this out in the open. Right. And trying to figure out how we could do this this legally so it, it is a unique approach um i i i think it's perfectly legal 
uh, for, for people to use it. They just have to follow the, the rules in their own jurisdiction. Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's the equivalent to a public, a public marketplace, a public market, uh, a farmer's market. It's just a digital version of it. Yeah, I, I agree. Oh, I want to add one more thing about Canada. So they're actually proposing a $25,000 penalty plus a two X exit tax to citizens who leave the country and want to, you know, uh, renounce their citizenship. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> I heard that. Is that is that real? Uh, I just know that they're proposing it, but they won't because they have an immigration crisis and they want to stop people from doing it. And it's it's crazy. So they charge them twenty five thousand dollars, and then plus two times the exit tax. That's so, crazy. I mean, look what they did to Roger Ver. <laughs> the guy yeah. paid they paid his exit tax, and he's still getting punished again ten years <laughs> later. <laughs> That's <laughs> wild. It's wild. It's modern feudalism pretty much um now let's get into um what representative sean Kasten wrote so uh he's against uh crypto mixers and he wants to introduce legislation to temporarily prohibit <laughs> crypto mixers yeah. um so congressman introduced blockchain integrity act so just two-year mixer bans so essentially during this two-year period they want to scope the handling using or transacting they want to figure out how it works and to be able to um put policies legislations in place to act against it now the thing is to do to propose such a thing you have to be you have, you have to be very um confident that it is being used solely for terrorist attacks and to finance those um and you know by illicit actors when in reality that's not the case. There's a lot of benevolent people using this analogy, but they just want to, um, they just want to be against it. They just want to shut it down and use any excuse that they can. It's great if they can, you know, stop terrorist attacks and, um, you know, uh, bad actors from doing what they do. That'll be great. But uh, that's not what they intend to do. Uh, they're just, they're just probably using that as an excuse. So. He said that cryptocurrency has been used to finance terrorist attacks around the world. Half of North Korea's nuclear program is funded through cryptocurrency. Theft made possible by mixers. Okay, and then in some other part of the world, somebody's using crypto um, to survive against their malicious government. So um, it's kind of like any, anything. Like it's about the person behind it, not, not the tool itself, um, like a knife. You can use it to kill someone or you can use it to just chop your chicken and you know vegetables so i don't yeah, think this that... is this is insane i mean so they're they're proposing to essentially ban privacy coins uh i think specifically say they're first they're going to like study them they're looking to ban quote unquote bitcoin mixers right um but then in addition to that privacy coins as well uh first they want to study them um but yeah there you go <laughs> I mean, that's, that's the ultimate, you know, uh, that's the ultimate step the government can take, can take against crypto would be trying to ban, ban Monero. And, uh, obviously we know Monero, Monero is built to, to function in spite of the government, not in accordance with it. Um, so it will, it, it won't be shut down. Um, I don't think, I don't think we get to this point in the U S where they actually do ban it. Um, if anything, I think the Streisand effect is, is, is real. And we might start to see some of that as, uh, you have, you know, it becomes a political issue and we have people out there debating whether or not it should be banned. That's going to bring more attention to it. And then ultimately the question is, is there enough political will on, on the side of open, uh, open and free usage of, of tools like this. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of, kind of be a relitigation of the, uh, you know, the, the crypto, um, the encryption wars in, in the nineties. And so, unless things have so drastically changed in this country, it should be the same outcome as, as what happened in the nineties with PGP body. Any, any thoughts on that? Do you think we're at the same uh crossroads or is is it dif different this time with crypto 
Uh, and I think that I think that the Fed boys have learned. So they're <laughs> yeah. they're doing everything they can to not make that direct attack. Last time in the '90s, they tried to bring the direct attack against the speech. You can't publish that speech, um, and and then they got they got hosed, right? They got owned. <clears throat> in this case, they're 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 really really focused on the corporate aspects. They've they've effectively put their clamps down on the entire corporate industry in every way possible. Um, and so now they can they can demand everything be done at the corporate level, even if um, they don't demand it to be done at the personal level. And in doing so, make it so difficult for people to actually operate, um, because in a lot of ways, they've made it almost illegal to, to operate outside of a corporate realm. Right. If you're operating outside the corporate realm, it is almost impossible. Right. It's like the mark of the beast. <laughs> the corporation is the mark of the beast. I'm just kidding. I don't really mean that. Um, but it's hard to operate outside of that realm. And then inside that realm, they've just completely controlled it. So their methods have gotten a lot more insidious, I think. Um, and, and I don't think they'll I don't think they'll ban Monero or ban mixing um, like as a fundamentally illegal activity. It's just that anything that touches the corporate world is not allowed to have touched those things. Uh, so to add, I think it's going to be interesting in the next couple of years, how many cryptocurrencies are actually going to claim to be privacy coins um, because of what the government is doing and what they're pushing. So um, I think probably eventually they're going to just uh, abolish the word privacy coins and just refer to Monero directly because there's not going to be any other coin that will claim to be private. Uh, just as we've seen in the past, like some of them, they used to be private and then they just um, switched into being hybrid or you know just completely abolished <laughs> the whole privacy thing um so that's going to be interesting and they're they're, they're kind of rebringing up this idea too that they they want to confiscate uh privacy coins um hmm. i've been we've been hearing that a lot and you've seen governments come out and say that they destroy they destroy privacy coins when they confiscate them. Buddy, you have any comment on that? I've been thinking about like you think that might have a real a kind of a, a a real effect on Monero. It depends on how much they're able to seize. One thing that hasn't been lost on me is that the government regularly seizes hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin, and then they sell that on the open market. That's generally price negative, right? That's that's a yeah. shitload of Bitcoin to get sold, and it it sort of suppresses the price. Um, so in some ways, you know, maybe that's, maybe that does help Monero's price a little bit. I also wonder how much are these guys potentially using in dark operations, right? Do they really destroy that or are they just holding it or do they give it to the CIA and say, Hey, if you need to run some fucking, uh, honey pots on the dark web, here's some Monero mm -hmm. to do it with. Right. I don't know. I mean, it, it could end up being pretty significant, right? Cause at the end of the day, that's what the final outcome is going to have to be. The Monero is going to still exist. People are going to still use it. They're just going to have to use good old fashioned police work to find criminals that are doing criminal things um, and confiscate their their Monero, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we're, I think I think you're going to see quite quite a bit of that, and Monero will will just continue to exist and be used. And if you're doing legal things. Uh, you shouldn't have an issue, right? And you're using this tool that they can't surveil, they can't see how you're transacting. But, you know, if you go ahead and start doing criminal things, perhaps you get caught in other ways and your Monero gets confiscated by the government and then gets destroyed. I mean, that that might be the direction we're, we're headed. So it might become a very real factor um, if there's a lot of people doing, uh, trying to do illegal things with Monero and they're getting arrested and the Monero is getting confiscated. Mm. The larger Monero becomes, the more that does become a factor. Yeah. It does. And the thing is, like, the larger and the more used Monero is going to become, the more people are going to use it for nefarious things. And then they're not going to mention at all all the good people that are using it for good things. They're just going to use all the people that are using it for a bad thing. And I do believe that, for example, in the UK and Germany and other European countries, specifically on the West side, I do think that it's going to get to the point where if they see Monero on your phone, they're just going to maybe put you in jail if you don't hand it over in that moment. Or I, I do think that that's a possibility. I think that the most important thing we can do as a community to to kind of fight back or have have our have the best possible argument when they do or if they do try to come ban it is to really just start using Monero as much as possible for everyday things 
for living off of um, and proving that it's a tool that's that's used by not by criminals but by normal normal people and mm -hmm. we we do need more examples that show you know what the the positive side of monero is what what monero can do as a as a tool for liberty that really nothing else can do um i think we need to kind of foster more of those examples we're starting to see it happen on kuno um you know we're we're seeing you know maybe some some people you know the the, the trucker protests right was a great example um but I think we as a community need to try to help foster the development of it being used for politically positive purposes. We need to show examples of why Monero matters, of why ultimately society, societies, if you want an open and free society, you need, you need Monero. Not really. Yes, I agree with that. And actually, that's a really good segue into two things. So I'll skip a couple and then we'll get back to them. Um, actually, I'll just quick, quickly mention this one. Kraken is the listing Monero in Germany. Boom, July 20, 24th. <laughs> Nightmare World, good. <laughs> Excellent news. Um, yeah, so crack, uh, Monero in Germany, bye-bye. Then... Um, that's a that's a big hit, by the way. I mean, uh, I, I, Germany was one of the... Felt like one of the hot spots for Monero. So. It is big. Yeah, I'm sure they'll they'll still be obtaining their Monero, but uh, I imagine I imagine Kraken was pro perhaps the the main way they they were obtaining it. It is big. We have a lot of um, Monero uh, people from Germany, so um, it is huge. Body, when do you when do you think Monero gets dropped from Kraken in the U.S.? I mean that that's some like banning Monero. Okay, I don't think that's happening. Um, a final delisting before relisting start again at some time in the future. Do, do you think uh, Monero gets banned from all centralized exchanges in the U.S.? It's hard to believe that would actually happen, but maybe. Um, I don't think it'll be legally banned. It'll, they'll just put the um, they'll just put the behind the scenes pressure on Kraken more and more mm. to try and force the issue. Maybe if Kraken can come out ahead on some of these lawsuits that the SEC is bringing, then maybe that never happens. If they pass legislation, that, that becomes more problematic. Then it becomes a question we'll have to fight as a community in Monero whether or not we should try and fund some sort of legal defense um, for Kraken. It's like, well, why would we fund a corporation? But, you know, maybe it's worthwhile. I, th there would be, I would be divided on the issue, and I think the whole community would be divided on the issue, but I think it's worth looking at. Would it be worth funding the legal defense of Kraken um, and their right to list a privacy coin? Um, that that could be an important trial, and that might oh, that might help yeah, us. That'd be worth it. I mean, that that's that's the fight, right? I mean, we got we got to we have to fight back on uh, as they push, right? They're, I don't I don't th I don't think we should just you know let like roll over and let governments do what they are going to do and then we just hope that the technology can still be used i think we need to to fight back when they when they try to take an inch the um the counter response on that the the it would be that well you know it was always supposed to be peer to peer we need to find ways of of transacting transacting amongst each other um we need to get out of that corporate realm that corporate world that's heavily controlled and we need to not wait and ask for permission we need to just go do it and and which means disobey and if it means being criminals if they want to label us criminals well they already kind of have They've already basically labeled us all criminals. So there's there's that that would be the, the counter argument. Yeah, I don't I don't buy I'm not into I I, I think we one hundred percent should focus on that, you know, creating a peer to peer economy, one hundred percent. But it doesn't it doesn't help us by not having on ramps. Um No, that's true. To I, and I feel like there's that we should fight them over there <laughs> instead of fight them over here. If we right, fight right. them and the, and exactly. do those legal battles to keep Kraken's right to list Monero, then they're not going to, you know, that'll stop them in their tracks and they're going to have a hard time coming after interpersonal use. Whereas exactly. if we just roll over and Kraken delist it, they're coming for your personal exchanges. Like even if you're not making it your business and you're just like, Hey, I'll trade you a spot price. No one's making any profit. I don't do this regular, like they'll come after that next. So it's like, we got to stop and fight them somewhere. Um, and that's as good a place as any to fight them. So. Yeah, I kind of question people that don't ultimately agree with that because 
if you're just you're just kind of rooting for Monero to be hurt more. We yet yeah, everybody agrees that we want to live in this ideal world where Monero exists completely outside of the fiat system and is flourishing. We all want to get there, but by completely cutting the umbilical cord doesn't doesn't help us at this point. We may have no choice, and then at that point, yeah, let's let's continue to exist and we will fight and we'll exist, but. Um, I don't think we'd do ourselves any favor by not by no longer being listed on any centralized exchanges. I mean, as Ar Arctic thinks, you know, Arctic thinks that's the best way to obtain Monero <laughs> that you have, you know, evidence that you of, of how you obtained it and then go use it as you need. Uh, but if you want to then interface with, you know, uh, with the fiat world with it, um, you kind of need you need a way back in. Hmm. Which is a good point, but then it depends in the country in which you live in and whether owning it is a criminal activity in itself in the future and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So um, so what we talked about is a really good segue of being careful who, with whom you vote with in the future in the US. Um, I'm not saying that I'm pro Trump or pro anybody specifically, but I would definitely rather 100% choose him over Biden and any rational person should do that as well. So we're going to watch this video and then we're going to watch another one um, on Trump. The other one is six minutes, but, but it's really worth it because it's really, really um, interesting. So in this one, he talks about uh, crypto. They are against it. The Biden, uh, Biden doesn't even know what it is. If you ask Biden, <laughs> sir, are you for or against crypto? What's that? What the? Get me off the stage. <laughs> you say, get me off the stage. No, he has no idea. But uh, look, Gensler is very much against it. The Democrats are very much against it. And I say this, uh, a lot of people are very much for it. Probably a lot of the people in this group. Uh, and I'm fine with it. I want to make sure it's good and solid and everything else, but I'm good with it. And uh, if you want, if you like crypto in any form, and it comes in a lot of different forms, if you're uh, in favor of crypto, you better vote for Trump. If he's going to be president <laughs> again, I think he's going to need to have a helicopter with sniper rifles watching him all the time just to make sure that he's going to be alive in like 50 bodyguards. Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the Bitcoin kind of... Maximals, they, they they might be trying to get some revenge there. He said crypto, any crypto, it comes in many forms. Uh -oh. <laughs> Sorry, Max. Yeah, he's, he, he, needs, he needs to get those votes. I mean, it doesn't help him enough to be BTC Maxi. He's, he's all about the votes, right? So all cryptos, all forms, just vote for me. Mm -hmm. And then yeah, it's going to be interesting. Uh, I think... But there's two things. One, the question is privacy coins, though, right? Like, what's what? Like, well, you know, there's got to be some. Like, I, I don't know. I don't. I don't think he's. I don't think he would be. Uh, he needs to be convinced to be to be pro Monero. Yeah. That's right. Do you think? Do you think? Do you think Trump is there yet on Monero? I mean, RFK Jr. I would think he's there based on what I've heard heard him say in the past. He'd be a complete hypocrite if he's not. But Absolutely. I haven't really heard Trump kind of talk about like the need for digital cash, people to be able to transact. Well, he, he's he's against the CBDCs, um, but yeah, does he think you know U.S. citizens have a right to use untraceable digital cash? No, so it's a million, million dollar question. Question. I would I would point that um, the office of the comptroller of the currency under Trump's administration um, had that. Um, release, they, they had a big release guidance that said that even cryptos with anonymity enhancing functions, um, they believed could be made compliant, that, that they would be able to comply with the laws in a similar way as cash. That was under Trump's administration. I don't know if he directed okay. them to say that or so that there was it that said that there, that was the office of the comptroller of the currency. They're the lead regulator yeah, for yeah. all us banks. Yeah. I don't, I don't really, I don't remember that one. Okay. Yeah. That was back in 2020. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's positive. That's positive. I'm hoping um, we're gonna we'll be talking about this later with our special guests today. We're gonna be going to the Libertarian Libertarian National uh, Conference in D.C. and actually Trump is supposed to be that go down there and give a speech. Uh, and RFK Jr. will be down there, and Vivek Ramaswamy. So I'm hoping to get 
you know, would love to interview them. Probably, you know, maybe that won't, I won't get Trump or something, but even just talking to his people、um, and just talking to them about Monero and trying to feel them out and figure out, you know, how, how can we get information to him where he can learn about it. I think,、uh, you know, probably Vivek, I could probably get Vivek's here. And Vivek seems to be the, the gateway to, to Trump in terms of what his opinions are with regards to crypto are. So, hoping to. Get that message across. And so now we're going to watch this video. And having what Doug said and based on what Body said, so、um, what he's going to say here if he's going to be against Monero, if he's going to actually be a president, then that's、um, that'll be interesting.、Um, so in this video, we're going to watch the whole six minutes. I think that is really important. He talks about、uh, censorship and that it's time for an internet bill of rights. So let's watch this speech. Then we just don't have a free country. It's as simple as that. If this most fundamental right is allowed to perish, then the rest of our rights and liberties will topple just like dominoes one by one. They'll go down. That's why today I'm announcing my plan to shatter the left wing censorship regime and to reclaim the right to free speech for all Americans. And reclaim is a very important word in this case because they've taken it away. In recent weeks, bombshell reports have confirmed that a sinister group of deep state bureaucrats, Silicon Valley tyrants, left wing activists, and depraved corporate news media have been conspiring to manipulate and silence the American people. They have collaborated to suppress vital information on everything. From elections to public health, the censorship cartel must be dismantled and destroyed, and it must happen immediately. And here is my plan. First, within hours of my inauguration, I will sign an executive order banning any federal department or agency from colluding with any organization, business, or person to censor, limit, categorize, or impede the lawful speech. Of American citizens. I will then ban federal money from being used to label domestic speech as mis or disinformation. And I will begin the process of identifying and firing every federal bureaucrat who has engaged in domestic censorship, directly or indirectly, whether they are the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Health, Human Services, the FBI. The DOJ, no matter who they are. Second, I will order the Department of Justice to investigate all parties involved in the new online censorship regime, which is absolutely destructive and terrible, and to aggressively prosecute any and all crimes identified. These include possible violations of federal civil rights law, campaign finance laws, federal election law. Securities law and antitrust laws, the Hatch Act, and a host of other potential criminal, civil, regulatory, and constitutional offenses. To assist in these efforts, I am urging House Republicans to immediately send preservation letters, and we have to do this right now, to the Biden administration, the Biden campaign, and every Silicon Valley tech giant. Ordering them not to destroy evidence of censorship. Third, upon my inauguration as president, I will ask Congress to send a bill to my desk revising Section 230 to get big online platforms out of censorship business. From now on, digital platforms should only qualify for immunity protection under Section 230 if they meet high standards of neutrality, transparency, fairness, and Non discrimination. We should require these platforms to increase their efforts to take down unlawful content such as child exploitation and promoting terrorism while dramatically curtailing their power to arbitrarily restrict lawful speech. Fourth, we need to break up the entire toxic censorship industry that has arisen under the false guise of tackling so called mis and disinformation. The federal government should immediately stop funding all nonprofits and academic programs that support this authoritarian project. If any U.S. university is discovered to have engaged in censorship activities 
or election interference as in the past, such as flagging social media content for removal of blacklisting. Those universities should lose federal research dollars and federal student loan support for a period of five years and maybe more. We should also enact new laws laying out clear criminal penalties for federal bureaucrats who partner with private entities to do an end run around the Constitution and deprive Americans of their first, fourth, and fifth amendment rights. In other words, deprive them of their vote. And once you lose those elections, and once you lose your borders like we have, you no longer have a country. Furthermore, to confront the problems of major platforms being infiltrated by legions of former deep staters and intelligence officials, there should be a seven-year calling off period before any employee of the FBI, CIA, NSA, DNI, DHS, or DOD is allowed to take a job at a company possessing vast quantities of U.S. user data. Fifth, the time has finally come for Congress to pass a digital bill of rights. This should include a right to digital due process. In other words, government officials should need a court order to take down online content, not send information requests such as the FBI was sending to Twitter. Furthermore, when users of big online platforms have their content or accounts removed, throttled, shadow banned, or otherwise restricted, no matter what name they use, they should have the right to be informed that it's happening, the right to a specific explanation of the reason why, and the right to a timely appeal. In addition, all users over the age of 18 should have the right to opt out of content moderation and curation entirely, and receive an unmanipulated stream of information if they so choose. The fight for free speech is a matter of victory or death for America and for the survival of Western civilization itself. When I am president, this whole rotten system of censorship and information control will be ripped out of the system at large. There won't be anything left. By restoring free speech, we'll begin to reclaim our democracy and save our nation. Thank you and God bless America. So all are, right, <laughs> hey, are, uh, I mean that that man. is that is amazing. If he could, you know, if he actually will will follow through um, on what he's saying here. I mean that is tremendous. If he follows through on that, he bas he basically promised in that speech that he would you know that Monero would never be banned. So hopefully that's going to be so. And people are asking. I mean, he said he. he he would ban all federal offices from infringing infringing lawful speech in any way. That sounds like you know the guarantee for the use of uh, open source technologies that people use to communicate value. It does, sound, like, it does sound very promising. <laughs> um, people are asking if it's AI generated or if it's uh, deep fake. So this actually comes from the official website. And it's posted on his social media, so it's not a deep fake, or even if it is AI generated, it comes from him. So, uh, but it does have an AI feel to it. Um, I mean, yeah. it's probably him reading a teleprompter, and it's just like like highly like edited and polished, you know. <laughs> I think so. Um, but what or maybe than... it is. Maybe it's just easier for them to freaking use AI. <laughs> like, is is it gotten to that point? Rather than having Trump stand there and, and say these things, and he I just kind of he, he, he just okay's it, just signs off. <laughs> it could be AI enhanced, right? He might have actually been there speaking. It could be cut it, edited, and then enhanced yeah. with AI. Right, right. He, he's looking more orange and, and uh, vibrant, <laughs> more saturated uh, than usual. Yeah, exactly. He's more vibrant. Possibly they could have taken just a picture of him standing there, and then they have they have him looking like a Chad there as he's free speech. <laughs> We we need him with the Monero hat, free speech money. We need like I need to get him a, I get him a Monero hat. See if I can get it in his hands. Maybe free speech uh, money. Maybe the Omega hat didn't stand for Make America Great Again. Maybe the first letter was Monero and then the other ones were something. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
there's a video of somebody in the crowd asking Trump if he's pro crypto or something like that. And um, I think a better question is if you're pro Monero, because nowadays pro crypto doesn't mean that you're necessarily, um, you know, pro freedom. And then they can just say, yeah, yeah, I'm pro, I'm pro crypto and all this stuff, but it doesn't really mean much. Uh, it doesn't mean that they're pro privacy. So, um, yeah, it'll be interesting to 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 get them to v just even verbalize Monero at some point and just talk about or just talk about privacy coins in, uh, specifically. Um, but if he does, all does, does he about, does he view Monero as being free speech money? If it was explained to him and he understood the technology, would he agree that it's you know free speech? That's that's the question. If we got Trump on Monero Topia. <laughs> To make sure, why not? Oh my god, that would be crazy. Um, okay, so let's go back now. Um, okay, so let's talk. Actually, um, can I mention this last because we're talking about Trump and all this uh, government? Let's talk about the IRS. So, um, this is a list of IRS investigative interests. Essentially, the IRS now is targeting people who threaten Washington's ability to govern. And they wrote a bunch of statements, basically saying, do anything that we don't like, <laughs> and we're going to threaten you. Uh, but just to read a few, advance the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction or their... This delivery. is exactly what, what Trump would ban. This is These are the type of actions he'd ban. He'd prevent all... <laughs> so he would he would prevent the IRS from, from take, taking these actions. That would be insane. <laughs> I mean, this is. I mean, look, look what they're doing. Is this is this real? By the way, like, is anybody? Is this like confirmed? I'm not. Sure. It's pretty bold to say that now they're targeting. Did they, did now. they put out like a press release? Did the IRS like put out like a? I haven't seen anything. Like, where is this information that. coming from? I know. I haven't seen anything like that. Because like, they're basically saying the IRS is now weaponized and it's it's going after certain groups for political reasons They're, they they have they have the they they now have a way of you know going after people essentially politically florida said in the youtube comments uh, get to his people dog we are the man for this outreach to trump's team anyway i mean we can we can get uh we can get this funded <laughs> if we can get them on the show even for like 10 minutes that would be amazing <laughs> um yeah, so I'm not sure if whether this is true, but all these sentences, statements are basically just saying, do something that we don't like and we're going to be against you. So, um, okay. Don't yeah, I... some of them are, I mean, they're, they're very egregious. Basically, if you look, they could go after you for, for using Monero. Some of those can be interpreted. But go back to them for a second. Like, uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, even the last one, obstruct justice by advancing technology and techniques to combat law enforcement in its efforts to combat uh, transnational organized crime. <laughs> so, you know, the transnational organized crime groups could use Monero. It could it could, it could help them in, in, in the crimes they commit. So the IRS will consider that an obstruction of justice for anybody who's advanced me right I'm, I'm 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 doing this right now currently as we speak uh, i'm now a target of the irs because i'm talking about a technology that could potentially be used to commit crimes yeah we are all on that's, the list that's the same yeah from all three noticed over the years they've gotten more and more broad with their language they they use language that basically says anyone that does anything we don't like that that challenges anything that we want to do is now a criminal like that that's literally like it used to be the case that i would push back against crypto people in general um when some new legislation or guidance would drop in, in those cases in the years past legislation and guidance would be targeted at specific things and you could see it in the language yeah i mean it was kind of technical jargon and legal speak whatever but it was there what they're doing now is they have they have massively pivoted to switching their language to being as broad and all inclusive as possible. Like notice they say conductor facilitate cyber or other activities. Every act, literally every activity mm -hmm. is either cyber or other. Like this, there is no like 
<laughs> they, they should just say all activities, but they and this, they they put in this language that's supposed to sound like they're only specifically, but no, they're they're saying literally everyone and everything. Right, it's as general as you can be, and this is coming from the IRS, which it's not their mandate to be, you know, the police arm of of the U.S. government. They're just supposed to collect taxes, and I guess if they think that somebody's not paying their taxes, go after people that they think aren't paying taxes. They shouldn't be going after any of these groups or things that people may or may be doing the question is did they pay their taxes and then you collect their taxes that that is the mandate of the irs now they're now they're doing you know um now they're basically in in an arm of i don't know of freaking the doj essentially mm -hmm. I feel like they wrote these sentences with uh, ChatGPT, and they, they they just they just said write a couple of statements, make it very broad, and make them mean that <laughs> anything you do against us, there's going to be repercussions for it. Um, yeah. Uh, let's go to let's go to um, this post on Reddit. Um, so remote onion nodes are possibly under attack right now. Every single remote onion node listed on XMR Guide has been offline in the past couple hours, even Cake Wallet, and then some of them go back online briefly, only to go back offline again. Uh, Rockingham responded to that. He said about an hour ago, and this is three days ago, someone broadca uh, broadcasted dozens of large 150 input transactions. The um, tax pool has many, transaction pool has many transactions waiting to be confirmed. In these circumstances, remote nodes uh, become overloaded because wallets are asking for the transaction pool data. Um, 0x FFFC is trying to locate the bottlenecks in the Monero node code that caused the overlay and fix them. Um, so, by the sounds of it, by the sounds of it, it doesn't seem like we know exactly what's uh, what's going on with this. Yeah, I don't know. I haven't been yeah, following. Attack. I don't know, Body, Have you been following this at all? Was this like a significant attack? No, I just saw it this morning. I was actually reaching over to my laptop to see if my Tor, uh, if my Tor node is um, is updated or not, let me check here. Give me a minute. Okay. Well, don't you keep moving? In the meantime, um, let's talk about cryptographic accumulators like Curve Trees are a fundamental tool for any protocol. They were mentioned today on Delving Bitcoin and by the Monero community as a replacement for ring signatures. Um, so let's go in here. Yeah, I just um, I don't really know much it's about this guy, um, but I think it's cool that he's noticed that if, if you go back to his tweets, go back to his tweet thread for a second. Um, I can't read it, Tony. If you could read some of his tweets. You want me to zoom in a little bit or I can? Um, do, 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 do. He, men he mentions Monero. Oh, he does. Yeah, right here. Yeah. Yeah. So he he sees that you know these curve trees are now being adopted and used, and he thinks that's awesome. Wait, wait, Tony, scroll up. Yep. Read. Okay. Uh, the great thing about curve trees is that it doesn't introduce new cryptographic assumptions, unlike many other zk systems, including Zcash, which has its own accumulator and sapling. I'm not technical enough to understand what exactly that means. An accumulator is the thing that makes Zcash work. I worry that they jump the cryptographic gun. So it's interesting. Um, I, I don't, you know, I, this guy seems pretty legit. I've seen him around. He's always, he seems to be uh, an expert in, in this, in the field of cryptography. But what he seems to be suggesting here is that um, Monero uh, with full chain membership proofs and the fact that it's it's using curve trees may make it a more secure implementation than what Zcash is doing. Um, mm. If you scroll, that that that's that that seems to be what he's saying. I haven't heard Luke say that, um, but that seems to be what this guy's suggesting. Buddy, you have any thoughts on that? He's thinking like it's kind of Zcash is a little too much moon math, right? Versus um, what what luke is looking to do with uh curve trees yeah i mean if that's if that's true then it's one a general idea with best practices is to make something as simple as possible but as complex as necessary 
the more complexity you introduce, the more potential there is for some kind of problem to crop up. And um, yeah, Zcash has been said many times that it's, you know, that they created new cryptographic assumptions um, and that it's, it's, it's quite complex. I know there's people that would disagree with that, but um, uh, assuming that this is true, I mean, that's, that's a good thing. That can only be a good thing, especially if we're doing transaction sizes at the same size or smaller than, um, than what Zcash is currently doing. Maybe we could try to, I'm going to try to get in touch with this guy and do a Monero talk, but uh, if, he, if, if he's the real deal, I'll try to maybe get him down to Monerotopia too. That'd be really cool. Mm -hmm. And then we're trying to, we're trying to get Zcash people down there. So we'd love to, you know, see these things discussed out in the open. Uh, update. My Tor node seems to be um, synced to the latest block height, so. Um, hopefully maybe the, that means the attack isn't too large. I'm a sample size of one. There's 20,000 other nodes out there, but my node seems to be okay right now. Okay. Now let's talk about, um, Intel broker. Uh, so they announced a data breach of Europool and they're, um, they're demanding XMR only for it. Um, which is very, <laughs> which is very interesting. So, so somebody hacked Europool. Mm -hmm. So and the, and the ransom is in. They're asking for Monero only. Yeah, so it could be one person or multiple people under the name of Intel Broker, and they claim to have allegedly breached um, Europol, and they're demanding Monero for it. If you scroll down, I think somebody then asked him, like, do they always ask for Monero? And he, I think, he actually responded. Yeah, uh, Zeno, asked, how often are you seeing XMR only demands? Usually, it's MM slash escrow. Some ask for BTC, some ask for XMR. Most of the time, they only list the dollar figure and discuss privately. All right, there you go, guys. Fed, feds, feds now have more evidence to shut us down. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Monero works as intended. Criminals choose the best tool for their job. <laughs> All right, okay. keep going. Yeah, uh, we have two more things. So one is um, something called a file wallet. Um, oh yeah, I thought I thought this was really really cool. Did you take a look at this? Yeah, I, I think it's really really interesting. Um, okay, so this is a fully open source tool in the form of a website that generates a cryptocurrency um, wallet in a deterministic way. Um, so what it tries to solve is the problem of long time storage. There is no need to store your generated seed in a secure place when you can regenerate it again in the same way. You just need to store the precursor, the file, and password used. Um, so, um, so yeah, instead instead of like having to memorize your whole whole mnemonic, you can go and regenerate it whenever you need it. Um, your whole seed phrase by just dropping a file into into this, right? And, and it's going to regenerate what your what your seed phrase was. So now instead of having to store your seed phrase somewhere, writing it down, however you may save it, um, now all you have to do is save this file. And this file could be anything, you know, it could be a photo that you have, it could be a music file, it could be any type of file. And so nobody's going to know what we all personally own millions of files, right? So nobody would know which file to check to, to, to even see if it's generated. Each one will generate a seed. So nobody would know which is which of those files is generating any seed that you may actually use. So it's actually a very creative uh, idea. I don't know if it there maybe maybe there's some hole in it that like uh, that makes it not practical, but that's my understanding of it. It seems solid if it's actually feasible. Yeah, that's funny. Well, Body, what do you think? I'm slightly skeptical. Um, a lot of people are going to use this for um, brain wallets. They have some password that they like. They're going to use that password to generate um, to generate a seed phrase that's going to be far less entropy and far less secure than a randomly a randomly chosen seed phrase. There's also the question of you. No, but the seed the... phrase is is generated from the file. It's getting the right. entropy from the file you drop in, right? So right. So if you have a text file, so I mean. That, that that would be the first thing I would say, but I would have other, other questions about it as well. And maybe, you know, maybe there's good responses to them. But um, so, for example, right now, your Monero wallet is stored encrypted in a file on your computer. And so even if someone gets access to your computer, they don't get access to your seed phrase because um, because it's encrypted. Now, 
if your file, if you have some random file on your computer, and I know it feels like, oh, I've got millions of files. Um, how could anyone find that that file? Hypothetically, if someone was able to get a hold of your computer and then just run every single file that you have through this tool, which is totally doable, eventually they're going to come across the file that that creates the seed phrase that has your um, that has your funds in it, and it's unencrypted. So right. So the the only thing at that point that's so then it's just the password that goes along with. So the only thing that's that's securing it at that point is the password. It's like you're so then you're kind of back to square one because now you're remembering a password. Is that? Yeah, I mean, I guess that's that. Is. Maybe that is a good response because you have the optional password up there. So if mm -hmm. you make it some kind of file and then you have a strong passphrase as well um, for the decryption on it, um, then perhaps. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, it seems cool. Um, I would I'm hesitant, but uh, I would I need to think about it some more and and see what kinds of points other smart guys trademark uh, bring up. Yeah. Cool to see. I think it's inventive. I think it's creative. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see if it's actually uh, if there's anything we're missing in terms of whether or not it ultimately is, is safe and secure to use. Uh, I reached out to the guy. We're going to have him on the show at some point. He'll, I'm sure he'll, he'll jump up and tell us more about it. But very cool to see that he's, you know, this. I think he's a, kind of coming from the, the Monero community. I don't know if, uh, which cryptos this works for, but I think he is a Monero guy. So cool to see that somebody came up with this. Actually works for uh, seems for a lot of them. Uh, Bitcoin, Monero, Ethereum, Ripple. Mm -hmm. So he supports a lot of uh, cryptocurrencies. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's the same concept. Could it be applied to any crypto? Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. So the last thing. Um... Oh, yeah. This is funny. <laughs> so he wants you to um, get on liberty. Lockdown. Yeah, I don't know what what is what 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 is the goal here though? Like, uh, what would the money be put towards? How how would this help us get on? How do you guys see that going down? I have no idea. Yeah, like what what is he thinking of doing? I don't know, I don't know but I like this one. To get it to get you on the road <laughs> <laughs> not the other guy yeah well <laughs> thank you buddy so luke, luke blocked me on facebook when the whole covid hysteria was going on and i was like bro come what on. Like, yeah yeah he because For... i kept insisting i was like you need like look at the data this is this is crazy like don't be a hypochondriac you know whatever and, and then he just blocked me he's like bro come on you're supposed to be freedom whatever and, uh, so wait what ended up, what ended up being his take on the whole covid thing I, didn't really I don't know what his current take is because I he blocked me, so I ignored him. <laughs> but <laughs> like in late in 2020, he was all hypochondriac, like we're gonna die, and oh my god, I don't know what his what his thoughts were on the vaccine, but I don't know. Ever since then, I just been like, all right, bro, you, 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 you missed that one. <laughs> yeah. Oh shit. Well, I'd love to go on a show, uh, talk to him about Monero. I, I've heard him mention Monero in the past. Um so yeah, but he should he should definitely give it more focus. I mean, I see what guess who's uh, drunk dial me saying, right? We need to get in that circuit, and ultimately Joe Rogan would be the uh, the ultimate target. But yeah, starting with with them or um, Tim Tim Pool, right? That's that's another another podcaster who I think should should have a Monero guest on. Mm -hmm. But very cool that yeah, you guys. Was... Uh, Someone Thought with of millions me. of followers. Luke's got half a million, which is quite a lot. But, you know, Rogan's got obviously hundreds of millions. It's going to happen soon. These larger accounts are going to start talking about Monero soon. I mean, it's at some point, they're not going to want to miss the miss the story here. They're going to want to be a part of it. I wonder if any guests of Rogan ever mentioned Monero on the show. Mm, no, yeah, maybe, that's maybe. I don't think so. I don't think no. I don't think that's happened. Snowden has been mentioning Monero more, right? Hasn't he? Hasn't he recently mentioned it? I saw somebody post I, that. I feel like I've seen something like that as well, where he's. I feel like he's talked a little bit more about it and a little bit more, at least neutrally to positive, as as opposed to back in the day when it seemed like he was. Well, it seems like he had kind of a conflict of interest with Zcash potentially. Mm -hmm. We're working on getting him for Monerotopia. We spoke to his agent here in the US. We had spoken to them a few years ago when I was trying to get him for an interview. 
and he will, he want he wanted to get paid and it just wasn't working out. We wanted to send him we wanted to send him the payment in Monero. And then the deal fell apart. Maybe it didn't fall apart because of that, but if he basically got busy and said, uh, you know, well, get back to me, whatever in the future. Um, so we did, you know, years later, we've now gotten back in touch. Uh, but now we're trying, you know, instead of a Monero talk interview, trying to get him to do a remote talk at Monerotopia. It'd be like an hour. I think he says he would do like an hour and a half. So we do have an hour talk and then maybe like a half hour of Q and a actually, I, I, obviously I'd rather do more Q and a than talk, right? We'd, uh, let, let's, let's, let's we'd, we'd try to go for that, but that would be exciting if we get him. Obviously we'd, we'd, we'd pay him. Um, but I think, I think it, it could be worth it. What do you guys think? I really think so. And I think, I think so if we are allotted an hour and a half, I feel like 30 minutes should be his speech and an hour just questions because a lot of people yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> like we all we all know your spiel Snowden. We all know it. We, 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 it's great. It's a great spiel. But you, you know, you're preaching to the choir. Now we have questions for you. We all, we all agree with the, the things you've said. But um, what do you well, can you imagine on this? I would yeah, actually like. like to hear him talk about some of the technical weaknesses of Monero. I'd like to, I'd like for him to to oh, bring yeah. the criticisms, and I'd like I'd like to hear him do it in a neutrally balanced way. Um, I, I think that would be interesting to hear his thoughts on that. Yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Maybe he has valid. You know, I'm sure he has. I would hope he has valid reasons. If he has, has you know, if that's what's holding him back. But I'd especially I, like to hear him speak about the implementation differences. Um, because he, obviously he was a Zcash signer, so, and maybe he doesn't have mm -hmm. to speak about Zcash at all, but I would like to hear him talk about implementation and theoretical cryptography versus implementation, you know, where the, where the rubber meets the road. I would kind of like to hear that kind of thing. Obviously, you know, he's a top level, uh, person, top level guy. So he's, you know, he's going to talk about what he wants to talk about, but I think that would be cool. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We'd have to grow, and and all the choices Zcash has made, right? Like with the, the founders' reward and the dev tax and the found, you know, like the, where, where, yeah. if you could go back, do you think it should have been done that way, right? Hmm. So yeah, hopefully we're gonna Snowden get him on. Take two, Monerotopia. <laughs> It'd be amazing. It would be amazing if we get him. I mean, he wants quite a bit, quite a bit, guys. He, you know. Um, I, I guess I won't talk about it publicly until we, until we see what happens, but um, we're, we're working on it. I feel, I feel like it's going to be worth it, whatever money he's going to ask for. Whatever. <laughs> not, you're, not not in you're not in charge of negotiating, yeah. Tony. You're oh, not no, in charge not, of negotiating. Not, 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 not in charge of negotiating. Oh, my God. Want, but, you know. Tony, that's not the art of the deal. <laughs> Well, he doesn't watch this. Movie. I mean, my, honestly, I think he needs Monerotopia uh, just as much as Monerotopia needs Snowden right now because he is at a point where he needs to come out and explain, you know, why he does and doesn't or does not support Monero, right? Because it's happening; it's the most used crypto for digital cash purposes. So I think I think he at this point he wants to he would want to associate with it. 